My name is David Habishon. I'm the Chief Information Officer at the Ministry of Social Development in New Zealand. And um, uh, as a CIO, I'm always looking for new talent. And um, there was an election last night. <laughs> So if you're, if you're a DevOps hotshot, come and see me afterwards. <laughs> there could be opportunities. So, um, so th this is an experience story. I'm, I'm talking about um, what we've done with DevOps at the Ministry of, of Social Development. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a new story because we've only been going since March. Um, and the other presentations I've heard about uh, continuous delivery and um, fabulous tools and, and that, those sorts of things. I'm a bit envious. But uh, this might be interesting to a lot of you um, in terms of, in terms of, of um, how we built up to this situation and, and what we've actually done. So um, I've also um, you know, heard a lot about um, unicorns and, and horses and um, uh, as, as a government organisation, uh, there are not, a lot, uh, not many government organisations here at the conference and um, uh, presenting. So, in the pantheon of, um, of, of horse breeds, probably government departments are at the Clydesdale end of the spectrum instead of thoroughbreds. But um, we're, we're learning to run very fast. The Ministry of Social Development, a, um, uh, by New Zealand started, standards, a very large organisation. And we, we deal with uh, human services, so we are um, uh, helping people who are in need uh, with economic assistance, uh, helping people who um, are vulnerable. Uh, there's a very wide range of uh, services that we offer. Um, but up, up here on the screen is, is our purpose statement, or, or an adaptation of our purpose statement. So whilst we provide all these services, uh, our, our goal is to help people be independent. So they might be in need, they might, be, might not be independent right now, but with our help, uh, we're hoping them to, helping them to be independent. So helping New Zealanders to help themselves be safe, safe strong and independent is, is our purpose. So I'll, I'll talk a, wee, a bit about um, MSD. Um, we are uh, the, the largest social service agency in New Zealand. Um, we have uh, 10,000 staff in over 20 locations. Uh, we pay out about 10% or we acquire services to the value of about 10% of New Zealand's GDP. That's over $20 billion a year. Um, and, and if you work for a large corporate in the US, these aren't big figures, but they're big figures for me. Um, so, um, and as I said, you know, we, we, uh, we aim to uh, create independence, we, we aim to get people off welfare um, f for their own good, for better social outcomes, but for better economic outcomes. You know, we aim to, to, to lower the cost of the welfare system to New Zealand. So I'll, I'll, I'll describe some of the services that we offer. Or well, we don't. We offer them, but we're also um, mandated to provide them, so we don't have much choice in the matter. Um, so I'll start off with with um, uh, working age welfare payments, and uh, that's where we pay people who are in economic need. Uh, they're, in, they're in reasonable dire straits. They're, they're not working. Uh, they could be not working because they've been laid off. They could be not working because they're a solo parent, uh, because they're unwell. And there are a variety of reasons why they might qualify for this working age benefit payment. And that takes um, multiple forms. It's a, there, there's a main benefit. There are things like accommodation supplement, um, um, hardship payments for food and those sorts of things for that working age population. Uh, we also uh, pay the, um, the, the national superannuation scheme where um, if, if, you make a, if, you, if you've lived in New Zealand, I think it's for 10 years, you automatically qualify for retirement income at the age of 65. Um, so student, uh, college student um, uh, loans and allowances, so uh, students who don't have the means to pay for their own course fees and uh, living costs can apply for an allowance and, and uh, if they qualify we'll give them one and they can also pull down an, an interest free loan. Um, we have the social housing uh, program uh, or public housing, so people who need a house and, and uh, aren't able to um, you know, find the rent for a private rental or whatever uh, can, can apply for a social house, we'll do that assessment and allocate them to a, to a queue for a social, social housing provider. 
we manage a lot of third-party contracts, and um, um, and then we, at the moment, that all this is going to change in the future. We do child welfare, so where there's been uh, child abuse, abuse or neglect, and looking after those children, um, and youth justice, which is where young offenders who are too young for the adult system um, are basically incarcerated. Um, so the the IT department, uh, just a, a few stats there. Again, by New Zealand standards, uh, quite a big shop. We, we, there's uh, 550 of us, uh, 370 permanents. Um, we look after over 70 significant line of business applications. Some of those are um, mission critical to the nation, like the welfare payments. If they don't happen, uh, there's potentially rioting and, and really bad things happen. Um, so, um, We um, have had a, a history of uh, quite good success um, in recent years, so uh, we have uh, acquired a good reputation for delivering large-scale waterfall projects, and, and uh, we've been surprisingly successful in that given how difficult waterfall, waterfall projects are, and, and a reputation for um, you know, solid operations, reliable operations. Um, but the context is changing and, and the demand is changing and uh, the, the Ministry is at the moment undergoing a, uh, a rapid transformation uh, in terms of the business model. So per, per, taking, um, changing the, the, the channel approach from face-to-face -face and phone to uh, web and mobile channels and re-engineering all the back-end processes around that. So the whole Ministry is going through a radical change. That, that puts a uh, that creates a whole lot of more um, technology demand, and we also had a, a constant stream of other projects like legacy retirement and that kind of stuff. So we knew that we um, that we had to change that we had to get um, faster time to value. We had been talking about DevOps for a while. Um, we, we had dabbled in agile, and um, we we did quite a bit of um, um, Kanban waterfall and quite a bit of Scrum waterfall which basically means that you could develop code fast, but you couldn't get into production. Um, now, we, we also thought we will get into DevOps, and, um, uh, but we're not ready. There was always a reason why we weren't ready. Um, we didn't have the tools. We didn't have the expertise. Um, we had a lot of projects on. We had to wait till those projects were finished. But then uh, something really bad happened. And that kicked us along. And, um, and uh, amongst our sort of string of uh, highly successful projects, uh, we had one that went quite badly wrong. Now, uh, it also overlapped with another major waterfall project. There, were, there was just massive duplication of test environments, code mergers, code branches, all sorts of things going on. Uh, the upshot is that it, that it did go live, um, but at great cost. Um, we, were, we had uh, uh, 600 known defects that go live. Um, we had 12,000 support calls in the first three months of operation. The first week, uh, the, the, the system was very brittle and we were uh, offline multiple times. That found its way into the, into the national press. There were questions asked about it in Parliament um, and it was a very bad scene. And, and one of the worst things about it was the, the, how hard it was on the IT team. So we had to do something, and um, uh, me and my IT leadership team resolved that we would never put people through that again. So we had to change something and change it really fast. We didn't know an awful lot about DevOps, but we knew that um, uh, it, it was a, a lifeline, and, uh, potentially. Um, but we, we couldn't wait until we had the tools and, and what have you to, to put it in. So we just um, put a stake in the ground and said, uh, from now on, we're going to do releases at six weekly intervals, and uh, we're just, everyone's going to have to fit with that, uh, because it was the only way that we thought of just um, overcoming the waterfall mentality. Um, and, and that has worked pretty well. Um, in fact, surprisingly well. We were able to, to fl uh, flip from a, a, uh, a waterfall organisation where everything was uh, massive releases uh, around project end dates to uh, releasing every, every six weeks. Now, uh, when, I, when, I, when I go, I've heard presentations in this conference about people releasing daily and that kind of stuff, I chuckle to myself and I imagine that one day we might get there for certain things. But, and that's the North Star, that's where we're heading. But we started with six weeks 
because it, um, it, it, was, it was ambitious but achievable and, and it wasn't too foolhardy that people wouldn't come on board with it. Um, and some of the features of it, you know, like I, I used to think that, well, you couldn't do DevOps if you've got uh, legacy apps and, and uh, systems of record and, um, uh, you know, off-the-shelf uh, COTS products and those sorts of things. But that's all mixed in. Um, so the way we've done it is we've got 20 main core applications to do with client services and client administration, and they all get released uh, on that six-weekly cadence uh, and with all the integration testing and what have you done. Um, so there's no... There's no technological barrier in terms of the, uh, the nature of the applications that has stopped us. Um, now, and another feature is that it's, um, uh, we've been able to uh, include technical debt retirement, which was a real problem for us in the past. So a portion of each release is, is dedicated to reducing technical debt. So that's, that's uh, starting to improve greatly for us. Um, so... Um, as, as I was saying, very good early signs. We took the approach of um, focusing on, on people and process. Uh, we didn't deploy any brand new tools, we just used tools that we already had like uh, Tosca and Jenkins. Um, nothing flash. Um, certainly when I get back to New Zealand we're going to be uh, looking at some of the tools I've heard about at this conference. Um, but it was remarkable how we were able to start uh, the, the, the movement just focusing on people and process. It was all about culture. So um, we got the teams working together. In fact, the, um, uh, the, the fact that we've had very four, uh, four very successful um, releases since March, um, 400 features, a, a radical improvement in quality um, over what we had. So um, you know, we want to get that defect rate down to zero but uh, only having 30 defects or less than 30 defects over, over four releases has been quite remarkable and the business is very pleased with that. Uh, we're certainly, um, you know, there, there were nine projects that uh, have been split up into bits and, and um, the, the time to value and uh, the creation of business value is happening much sooner under this regime. So there again, the, um, the, the front line and, and the customers are not getting massive change, they're getting smaller increments of change which are far more digestible and they're getting it earlier. Um, we, in order to do this, we, we've um, created some new roles, release trained engineers, that they, they arbitrate the content, if, if we've got nine projects going into one release, arbitrating the, um, the priority, making sure that the, the true business priorities are put through is, has, been, has been key. So wh wh I, I think we've been very successful. I think, I think we've, we've made a sea change. Now, it's still very early days because we need to get faster, we need to get higher quality, uh, we need to get more automation. But the, 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 the complete change of direction uh, has been um, extremely pleasing. And I think some of the success factors there are the, the IT leadership team and myself, all we did was set the direction, so we're going to six-weekly six, six weekly releases. Then the dev teams and the ops teams got together and they figured out how they were going to do it. And they made it happen. Uh, so you know, within six weeks of making that decision, we did our first release. Um, now that was very painful, but, um, but highly successful. And each subsequent release, uh, uh, we've learnt more, we've got better at it. Um, so the education uh, process. So um, uh, there are 300 people since March have, have had some level of instruction in DevOps, and that's an ongoing program, so we hope to get that up to everybody in IT, but also um, a whole lot of people in the business who, who are um, um, attached to these projects. Uh, we made targeted use of uh, the Scala Agile framework uh, safe, um, and, and I say targeted use because we're, we're careful that um, um, it doesn't become a cookie cutter because I think uh, safe is very software engineering oriented, um, it doesn't have much of the ops in it, um, and, uh, and sometimes it misses the point. Uh, so I think, you know, I talked earlier about, um, uh, you know, Kanban and, and, and Scrum waterfall, I think what's, if, if you're not careful, SAFE can lead you to developing a whole lot of code that you still can't deploy into production. So uh, the, the concept of DevOps, where you're constantly looking at throughput, you're, you're, you're talk, thinking about flow, you're making sure that you're 
identifying your constraints. You're, you're identifying where your next best investment is going to be in order to go faster and improve quality is, is a simple concept and it's predicated on people sharing, it's predicated on uh, people collaborating, it's predicated on people um, experimenting and um, uh, just making sure that, that that agile thinking is in place at all times. You can't go to a textbook necessarily, although there is now a DevOps handbook of course, but you can't really go, there's no absolute right way of doing DevOps. Um, it's, it's in your situation. Um, so we've also um, put, um, sought to extend DevOps to, uh, and using some of the safe techniques as well, program increment planning and those sorts of things, to, um, uh, we've put the infrastructure project on that footing now as well. So uh, all the infrastructure guys are actually using a, a DevOps concept for doing their projects. Um, in collaboration with the dev guys, so that, that's going, and I think at this stage we've probably got 60 or 70 percent of all our um, next six months or next year's uh, workload um, in, in uh, product backlogs and with product owners. Uh, so that's been very good. Uh, next steps, um, well we've established a great foundation and um, um, one of the things here is that um, we have an ambition to make uh, MSDIT and, and the broader ec ecosystem and, and the, the business people that we work with, work with closely, we want it to be a great place to work. Um, we want the people to enjoy themselves, we want people to be empowered, we want them to be able to make decisions, we want them to not be suffering from uneven work, um, works levelled and those sorts of things. That, that's, that's one of the real ambitions. If we, if we achieve that via DevOps then we'll have done a great thing. So, I mean, the, the emphasis on, on culture, sharing, collaboration, that, that will go on and on and on. Um, and as a, almost as a secondary thing, um, obviously, in, in order to move to uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment, we will have to do proofs of concept with new tools, deploy the stuff that works for us in our environment. But um, there is a North Star, you know, we are aiming for daily releases. Now, whether, that, whether or not the business will accept daily releases because it's um, too disruptive, I don't know. But there may be some products where we achieve that, or we achieve multiple uh, releases a day. But those are, that's where we're trying to head. Um, and, and in order to do that, the next step will be um, more automation, more continuous uh, integration. Um, and, and we'll do that on the basis of, of, of a metrics program. So what are the metrics telling us? Where's our next best investment? So don't, don't take a doctrinaire approach to it. Um, if, if, we're, if we spend a million dollars here, and it's going to improve uh, time to value by, by X, then that's what we'll do. So what do I need help with? And I don't know where the help's going to come from, but um, uh, the funding model is a big thing for us. And um, if you've ever worked in government, um, funding um, can be a bit bizarre. You know, you, you don't go to a board of directors and ask for, um, you know, funds to do a certain thing. The, it's, a, it's a far more convoluted uh, process. And the, the unit of measure for um, IT execution in government, and I think it's quite a common phenomenon around the world, is the project. The project is a thing. You do a business case, you get a lump of money for a certain outcome, you execute it, you put it live on a certain date. And, and it, so it's not conducive to DevOps at all. Uh, so I, I am working on how we change that funding model uh, at MSD, and maybe that's a, uh, we, can, we can be an exemplar for government in New Zealand about how you do these things, and that's, that's part of our ambition. Um, uh, influencing policy development. Um, policy analysts and, and anyone who's worked in government, policy analysts work with politicians and they dream up big things and then they come back to service delivery and they say, there you go, we want that in a year. Um, uh, and we need to go, uh, we need to shift left in that regard and that's what we're doing at the moment to, um, to, to be engaged with the policy people before they talk to politicians. Because um, once the politician agrees, you, you've had it. Um, stopping remaining waterfall releases, uh, we, we definitely want to get to a point where everything is in a DevOps construct, everything's in an agile construct. Um, moving the culture, uh, embedding agile thinking as the cornerstone of everything um, is, is, is vital so that that, uh, that that culture of innovation and collaboration and sharing is always nurtured. Um, now, sometimes you, you hit sticky points and, and you come to a bit of a juddering halt when you find a, a small cadre of, of people that um, don't buy into it and they don't really want to do it. Um, so that, I need help with that from time to time as well. So um, um, 
the, the education and, uh, and communication program. I talked about uh, you know, the, the, the fact that we're uh, continuously rolling out education uh, to the IT and the broader uh, ecosystem staff. Um, keeping that message fresh is, is going to be something that um, you know, we, don't want, we want to, don't want people to get bored with it. We want people to be really enthusiastic and, and switched on to it uh, into the future. Um, and um, stopping the, 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 the temptation for the Scaled Agile framework to be a cookie cutter approach to you, you, you pick up the manual or the, um, or the diagram and you do these steps and you get a result because if we do that then actually we've stopped thinking, we've, we've gone away from DevOps uh, principles around culture and, and uh, learning and so forth. Uh, and obviously, if we want to get to that daily, um, that daily release or more frequently, then uh, we've got to do a lot of work in the, in the CI and CD space. So, um, we, uh, we had a crisis. Uh, we didn't waste the crisis. Um, we put a stake in the ground saying we're going to six weekly to start with and we're going to speed up from there. Uh, and it's worked. And it's been done through people and process. It hasn't been done through tools. Um, and as, as a, an abrupt change of direction for that department, um, it's gone extremely well. So that's my story. Uh, thank you very much. That's great. We actually have a couple of minutes for questions. Does anybody have one? Here, let me get the mic to you, please. Um, do you think you'd have actually started this off without that minor issue? Um, we would have, um, but would have been a, uh, it wouldn't have been as dramatic and it wouldn't have been as successful um, because I think we would have overthought it. Um, getting started is, is, is the greatest virtue because if you start, you start learning. If, if you theorise and go, oh, we need this tool, and we need that, we need to hire these people, you don't get started. You're never quite ready. And, and this, you know, I've heard people talking about analysis paralysis in the, in, in the conference. You can get into that mode, and uh, you know, um, learning by doing is, is absolutely the best way. The crisis made us do that. It's actually a really good segue, because uh, on your, the change slide, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> on your, uh, the change slide, you talked about how you flipped from the waterfall uh, to early DevOps approach in two weeks. Yeah. Can you give a little bit more uh, detail on what your change management process was to do that so quickly? Because here it says what you need help with is stopping the remaining. So yeah. I just wonder, yeah. was there just phases that you went through and what yeah. did that look like? Um, we, we had a, a big workshop to figure out what we we're going to do. Um, I wanted to go to, to six weekly cycles. So really that was just plotting out what the release dates were going to be on the map and saying this is what we're going to do. This is when we're going to go live with, with these releases. The content of the releases will, will um, sort itself out based on capacity. And we chose release management as an enterprise process to start because that was our greatest constraint. Theory of constraints, start with your area of greatest constraint. Um, and really it was, it was then a question of just um, talking to all of the dev teams and the ops teams about this is what we're doing, can we do it? Well in fact, we are going to do it, we have to do it. We can't um, go back to that waterfall method anymore, it's just too taxing. So th these were the people that actually suffered the most in that, in that uh, waterfall project. Who, who, the people who worked 10 weekends in a row. Uh, the people who didn't, you know, IT as a normal job was, was as remote from their vocabulary as it could possibly be. So there was an awful lot of buy-in, you know. Um, as I said, don't waste the perfectly good crisis. We knew, you know, having done Kanban and Scrum and those sorts of things, we knew a, a thing or two about our job, but not much. Uh, and, and we certainly didn't understand lean, um, you know, and um, uh, uh, clearing constraints, widening those pipes, making sure that the the, the system is in balance. Um, that that was a, that was a philosophy that people really bought. Because what we saw on that project was a stockpile of, of work and code that you could not get through the, dev, the, the test environments, um, which is why it got so badly delayed. That's actually, it's actually not working. All we have time for, now it's working. Um, so thank you very much, and David's going to hang out here. If you have any more questions, you can just come up and talk to him. And please fill out your surveys. Thank you. <laughs>